What's popping ladies and gentlemen? Today we take a look at the night when Bob Marley almost lost his life at the hands of gunmen. The man who made the world groove in Jamaican tunes, an artist who was one of the faces of a rich and vibrant culture, was none other than Bob Marley. He made his mark by fusing the Jamaican styles of reggae, ska and rocksteady, creating a type of music that couldn't stop one from shaking their legs. Not only his music, but Bob Marley's religious identity as a Rastafari, his culture for Pan-Africanism and his demand for marijuana being legalized made him a standout icon of a contemporary culture. Born in the town of Trench Town, Jamaica, Bob Marley found peace in music even in times of unrest. Famously kickstarting his musical career in 1963 after forming Bob Marley and the Wailers Band, he and his group didn't have to wait for long to achieve success. With their song One Love, which featured in their debut album The Wailing Wailers in 1965, the world would greet them with open arms. Though the Wailers disbanded in 1974, Bob Marley was quick to find a backup band to keep in going. Nothing could dampen his spirits throughout his career except of course the near death experience in 1976. On December 3, 1976, seven men armed with guns raided Bob Marley's house at 56 Hope Road while he and his team were rehearsing for an upcoming concert in the home studio of Tough Gong. According to the reggae historian Roger Stephen, the attack happened in the midst of rehearsals around 8.30 p.m. in the evening. Two white vehicles drove through the gates of the Tough Gong studio, from which the longtime guards had mysteriously disappeared. The gunmen shot Bob Marley's wife Rita Marley first in the head as she was leaving the house in a Volkswagen, Rita stopped to let another car drive into the compound through the gate, which was curiously unmanned. As the other car passed, a gunman shot at her from the passenger seat, the bullet grazing across her scalp, leaving her bloody but alive. Tyrone Downey, a keyboardist for Bob Marley, said that the gunmen broke in while they were rehearsing the song I Shot the Sheriff. Bob Marley had stepped out and went to the kitchen to look for something to eat, where the assailant broke into the studio and opened fire on them. He was shot on his hand while his manager Don Taylor was pulling him down. Taylor and Louis Griffin, a band member, were shot in their leg and torso respectively. However, by some miracle, the gunmen fled the scene soon after shooting Bob Marley, leaving behind zero casualties. Either by good fortune or poor aim, the bullet aimed at Bob Marley skided off his chest, lodging his arm rather, while his wife Rita, although shot in the head while disembarking from a vehicle, survived the hit. Bob Marley's manager Don Taylor sustained serious injuries from being shot in the leg. The victims were rushed to the university hospital where they were treated. This infamous incident happened amidst political tensions that were going on in Jamaica where some believed that Bob Marley was affiliated with one political side. Despite the shooting, Bob Marley would go to unite the heads of the clashing political parties that is the former Prime Minister Michael Manley of the Democratic Socialist People's National Party. PNP and Edward Sigia of the conservative Jamaica Labour Party, JLP. This historical unification happened at Bob Marley's One Love Peace concert. And then Bob Marley would go on with musical career, touring all over the world like nothing had happened until he lost his life in 1981 to the melanoma disease.